Well, this just in, breaking moments ago, CEO Chris Licht out at CNN. His departure coming on the heels of a magazine profile that certainly angered staffers. He had lost the trust of the employees there. Fox News contributor Go Joe Concha is here. This was pretty stunning. He's only been there about a year. You followed this story pretty closely, including the recent profile that ran of him by Tim Alberta over the weekend. That didn't do Licht any yeah. favors? None whatsoever, Dana. You don't allow, or if you're a network president, at least if I were a network president, I wouldn't allow a reporter to follow me around for a year, including going to my workouts in the morning and just witnessing what I'm doing around the office uh, and then expect that the profile is going to be more positive than negative, particularly with all the struggles that Chris Licht has had as CNN president. And, and you said it exactly. I mean, he started there in April of 2022. So we're talking uh, less than 15 months. He is gone. And I can't recall the last time a network president at this level getting the act so quickly. And it was an internal coup led by on-air on talent, Bill Dana, at the networks uh, and is even its own media team that ultimately bought him down. And, and why? Because many could not accept the fact that Lick was attempting to move the network from being seen by conservatives and many independents as an activist news network, a, a resistance news network aimed at disparaging through provocative and personal opinion those right or right of center and thereby destroying the decent credibility it once had. And, and remember, Lick, he had inherited a network that had lost 75 percent of its audience when you're comparing early 2020 with the spring of 2022 when he came in. And new leadership there gave him marching orders, basically saying, move this network back to the center. The network it was under Bernard Shaw, Aaron Brown, and a guy named Bill Hemmer, right? Mm -hmm. Less provocative opinion, more solid reporting, more Republicans on the air. But that did not sit well with many at the network. Mm -hmm. And the dam broke over at that headquarters in Hudson Yards, just south of you, when they had the audacity of hosting Donald Trump, the clear front runner for Republican nomination, a former president that received 74 million votes in 2020 for a town hall. And these are the same people internally who had zero problem putting Trump on their air for countless interviews in multiple town halls back in 2016 because he was great for ratings and great for clicks. And now there's this moral outcry over the May 2023 town hall. And that was borderline hilarious to witness. But to your point, it was that Atlantic mm -hmm. piece that came out just a few days ago that ultimately brought him down, Bill. Yeah. Dana. Uh, the, uh, I was stunned to see anchors uh, from CNN being quoted in the Wall Street Journal yesterday. I mean, that that was pretty telling. Uh, but I think you're exactly yeah. right about the Trump town hall. That was the last straw. No matter how you conduct it, whether you let all the audience members ask the questions or allow your anchor to interject, uh, that did not go well inside the walls of CNN. No, and, and you talk about reporters going to the Wall Street Journal and going uh, and, and disparaging their boss. Uh, Anderson Cooper went on the air the day after the Trump town hall, and he said, he told viewers he wouldn't blame them if they never watched the network again. I mean, this is insane stuff. Uh, so, look, in the end, uh, Licht was in that Atlantic piece. Let's explain why that was so devastating to him. He was critical of the network's COVID coverage under Jeff Zucker. And basically, he accused journalists there of fear-mongering the public to keep ratings up. And he was 100 percent right about that. But, look, I'm not saying that Chris Licht did a good job, right? He's a former morning show producer uh, before he was with Stephen Colbert. And then he creates a morning show at CNN that stars Don Lemon, and he gets fired within six months. The show can't even attract. 400,000 viewers on average, and it took him a year to find a replacement for the 9 p.m. slot, which is crucial for any cable news network, a year. I mean, so, look, uh, he was in over his head. He was a former showrunner for Stephen Colbert. He had no business running an international news network, and now he's gone, and who knows what happens with CNN, but they are a rudderless ship yeah, right now. One, that is for one certain, more guys. point on that Trump town hall. I told Dana the next morning, I said, yeah. never seen a network disparage its own network more than what they did at the desk uh, when they were done with that event uh, with Trump. So uh, it is what it is. Onward, they've got a different leadership team in there, and we'll see how they do. Now it's their turn at bat, Joe. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Joe. Good to Indeed. see you. Thanks, Bill. Take care, guys. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.